Okay, so there's LED 2 and LED 6, they're off the green wire. Well, hello, Glue Troopers, Max and Max's models, and as the sun sets on the Tarvis, I'm heading uh, into the house to make this video. Got started on the uh, lighting system for the NX01 Enterprise, and it was pretty complicated. It, it's not particularly difficult, but what got really confusing is you get all of these parts, and they're all nicely labeled and bagged and everything. I like that very much. But one of the problems you run into is that it does not come with an on-off switch. Of course, you can just take the battery on and off. I have one that I'll probably install. But once you start looking at it, you realize there's two completely separate uh, wiring harnesses because apparently the company has two different contractors, I guess, that made their, their boards for them. So you have to check the color pattern to know which one you have. Do you have system A or do you have system B? I had uh, system B. But the other thing is that it shows all these resistors that have to go in, but it, you have three different groups of resistors. And I'm like, okay, which is which? And I'm snooping around, uh, looking at the harness and everything and, and trying to figure out what goes where. And had to call Ken. We were able to figure it out just based on the load, but what turned out to be uh, a little disappointing was I finally, after I was basically done and we pretty much had everything in the right place uh, by factoring the number of lights and the load and everything, but I had to call, you know, Ken, the tech support guy to, to figure that out. But then it turns out they do actually have uh, a key that shows you which way the anode and cathode of the LEDs go. Now that I already happened to know, but they are, all text instructions for the most part except for the diagram okay led 2 is a three millimeter and led 6 is a three millimeter so i look for led 2 and led 6. and they do have a, a map of the ship that shows you where most of the lights go so you'll know how much wire you're going to need the ship's not really that big but you have to look close for a lot of this stuff but my real question was how do i know i'm getting the correct resistors in place and then at the on page seven underneath the front and back diagram of the ship down at the bottom was a key that told you okay this is the resistor for this place why is that not up there in the diagrams that's where it needs to be that that could have prevented a lot of confusion anyway uh, the model as i started uh, looking at how the parts are going to lay out and looking at the pictures i found some lights listed that didn't seem to match the artwork, but then when I went and looked at actual animations of the ship, I realized that the artwork doesn't show the strobes on. So uh, there's a surprise how much lighting there is on this ship. So I was playing around with ways to fit it. Uh, the battery's not going to be able to go inside the ship, but the circuit board will. And unfortunately, when I play with the base, the base stem is not hollow. So the power source is going to have to be outside the vehicle and I'll um, have to figure out a way to cover up the wires. But, uh, you know, minor disappointment. This kit wasn't really made to be lighted. So uh, one nice thing is a lot of this major components press fit in place. So I'll be able to uh, play with it without having to glue everything in place. Fortunately, they do give you a, a few extra uh, components, a couple extra LEDs, a couple extra resistors. But... Anyway, the soldering's come a long way. As I was going, I was testing everything, make sure that uh, the connections were all good. I didn't want to get the whole thing wired up and find out it didn't work. So I tested every one of them as I went. And I don't know how long it'll take to actually build the kit. It's fairly straightforward. The key is going to be to get all the electronics in there without making a mess out of everything. I'm clearly going to have to paint it first because once... You get the clear parts and everything on masking off of this weird shape is pretty difficult. But uh, the thing was a real bunch of spaghetti. The wires kept getting each other's way, tying themselves in knots, you know, touching the wrong ground. So I finally just taped everything out, spider webbed it all, and uh, then started testing it. And at first it worked, and then it didn't. But with all the wires splayed all over the place, I probably had a short somewhere. So I basically went over the whole system, and then it all started working again. <laughs> But uh, this is a whole day's worth of work just to get this far with it. And we had a few things crop up that took my attention away from model building. And 
same will probably go for tomorrow, but I'll get done what I can. But at least I know it all works now. I, I have to run a ground wire through this whole thing. That's why you see me testing all the lights individually. And every one of these things has to have a ground wire um, drafted onto it. So, yay. <laughs> but, hey, that's electrifying your kit. Well, all right, guys, that's uh, what I got done today. That was enough. Uh, you guys take care of yourselves. We'll talk to you later. And as always, model on. Please don't tell Scotty the warp drive won't light. The wires and LEDs fit is too tight. Forbidden Planet Star Cruiser looks like it died. The Millennium Falcon looks like I pimped my ride. My Star Trek ships got a tilted nacelle. The saucer section's gone straight to hell. Robot from Lost in Space is laughing at me. The whole shuttle craft is stuck on my knee. Please don't tell Scotty the warp drive won't light. The wires and LEDs fit is too tight. Forbidden planets testing my grace. Lost in my work on lost in space. Why do the lights flicker? Why won't they glow? I soldered and taped but the power won't flow Captain Kirk would never deal with this mess I think I'm losing my model builder finesse Skywalker's X-wing sags no matter how hard I try I glued it back on now it looks like a Y The Jupiter 2 looks like a big tater chip I'll use the Death Star as a bowl for some dip. Now I gotta hook a ground, one ground up to all of this stuff. That's gonna be fun.